Trouble mounts for Nestle as center steps in. False complaint with the National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission. Delhi government bans sale of Maggi for 15 days. Retailers take Maggi packets off their shelves. Retain chains led by Future Group and Consumer Cooperative Society Kendri Bhandar stop sale of Maggi. Army issues advisory directs military canteens to set aside existing stock. India-US signed a new framework agreement for closer cooperation in defence. Agreement signed by India's Defence Minister Manohar Parikar and US Secretary of Defence Ashton Carter. Carter, who is on a three-day visit to India, also met Prime Minister Narendra Modi and External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and conveyed India was an important strategic partner. India and Belarus signed six agreements to enhance bilateral cooperation, including agreements on textiles protocol to amend the agreement between two countries for avoidance double taxation, an MOU between Prasad Bharti and National State TV and Radio Company of Belarus Broadcasting Cooperation. President Pranam Mukherjee, who is on a state visit to Belarus, reiterated India's commitment to a deeper and more diversified relationship with Belarus. Delhi government rejects press applications for license by Uber and two other taxi service providers, Ola and Taxi for Sure. The move comes as the three cab aggregators fail to file affidavit giving details like number and addresses of drivers and how they plan to do background checks. Delhi court directs CBI to reply on allegations that Congress leader Jagdish Teitler tried to influence a witness in a 1984 anti-Sikh riot case in which the agency has filed a closure report. The court, which was hearing arguments on CBI's closure report filed in the case against Teitler, has now fixed the matter for June 26. Centre takes proactive measures in wake of deficient monsoon predictions. Agriculture Minister Radha Mohan Singh exudes confidence over tackling deficient monsoon, minimizing production losses and its possible impact on overall economy. Government also working on bringing a new crop insurance policy by the end of this year to protect farmers' income. Dozens of people broke through a police cordon as they marched towards the site of a sunken cruise ship in the Yangtze River to demand news of missing relatives. Rescuers searched for more than 400 missing people but hopes were fading of finding more survivors. Only 14 people have been found alive and 29 bodies recovered since the ship capsized in a tornado on Monday night with 456 people on board. More than 10,000 Islamic State fighters have been killed since an international coalition began campaign against the group in Iraq and Syria. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the coalition had seen a lot of losses within the IS in the past nine months but warned IS remained resilient and capable of taking the initiative. Israeli troops clash with Palestinian protesters in Jerusalem. Scuffle erupted outside of the Damascus Gate, where hundreds of Palestinians gathered to protest against the inauguration of the Jerusalem Light Festival. The Light Festival is an annual event organized by Israel Jerusalem municipality. Heavy fighting rages between Ukrainian government forces and pro-Russian rebels near Donetsk. Ukraine accused the rebels of launching a full-scale offensive in violation of a truce. The separatists deny this. This is the first serious battle in months since the ceasefire signed in February in Minsk, Belarus. In yet another attack, at least six killed in an explosion in the northeast Nigerian city of Maiduguri. Maiduguri has been a regular target for Boko Haram since the group began its insurgency six years ago. The city has been hit four times since last Friday. Saudi-led airstrikes kill around 20 Houthi fighters outside the southern Yemeni port city of Aden. A coalition of Arab states began bombing Houthi forces, the dominant faction in Yemen's civil war in March, in a campaign to restore President Abdrabu Mansur Hadi to power shortly after he fled to Saudi Arabia. In the French Open, Novak Djokovic beats nine-time champion Rafael Nadal in straight sets to set up semi-final clash with Andy Murray. Djokovic becomes only the second man to beat Nadal at the French Open with a straight sets victory in the quarterfinals. In the women's singles, Serena Williams enters semis after thrashing Italian Sara Irani. Indian challenge ends as Sanya Martina bow out of the French Open. Sanya Mirza and her Swiss partner Martina Hingis lose to Bethany Matic Stans and Lushi Safarova in straight sets in the quarterfinal. Top seeds and hot favourites Sanya and Martina went down to the seven-seeded American Czech pair 5-7-2-6 in the clay court Grand Slam. Former top FIFA official Chuck Blazer admits to accepting bribes in conjunction with the choice of South Africa as 2010 World Cup host. Blazer said he also helped to arrange bribes over the 1998 event. US has launched a wide-ranging criminal case that engulfed FIFA and led President Sepp Blatter to resign.